Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between an idea and an invention. One thing that some inventors often struggle with is identifying the invention within the idea. Sometimes, upon further investigation, we find that while there is an idea somewhere, the invention itself has yet to be developed. <coughs> So we have to be able to answer the question, how does it work? And let's illustrate this with a totally hypothetical example. Let's suppose that one day, after coming home from food shopping, you're looking forward to a delicious fruit salad using the fresh cantaloupe you just bought. You cut open the cantaloupe and cut out a small piece to taste, and yuck! The cantaloupe tastes like foam rubber. Wishing to put a stop to that forever, you decide to invent a produce tester. It can simply scan a piece of produce and determine its ripeness and quality. The problem of bad tasting produce will be solved and you will be rich from your invention. But wait, how does it work? How would you make it and how would you use it? Patents are required to teach someone of ordinary skill in the particular field how to make and use the invention. So if you don't know how to make and use the invention, you really do not have the invention yet. So if the answer to the question, how does it work, is I don't know, then we're still at the idea stage and not yet at the invention stage. So basically looking at this chart, <coughs> at this point, we're here where the star is at the idea level and we want to get into the center where the invention is, which is an enabled solution. So we're use, introducing a term of patent terminology called enablement. Enablement basically means that there's enough detail to tell somebody how your invention works. Not so much just what it does, but how it does it. So here we've uh, added a little more detail to give it some enablement. So we have a theory of operation that there is a relationship between emitted ethylene gas and fruit ripeness. And by detecting the amount of ethylene gas, an assessment of fruit ripeness can be determined. So we can know if we detect a certain amount of ethylene gas that the fruit is either good or not good. So to implement this, we'll have a microprocessor that will interface with an ethylene gas detector. And <clears throat> there will be some kind of user interface, which could be as simple as a green light for good fruit and a red light for bad fruit, something like that. And so in here, we're at this stage where we have an invention, we, we're starting to get into how it works and what are the high level pieces we need and how they interact with each other to make this work. Now, uh, just from looking at this, can we build it? Probably not. There's probably other details to be worked out kind of microprocessor type, the kind of sensor, calibration procedures, user interface design, all these different things. But going back here then to enablement, at least we have the basic uh, approach as how it's going to work. So at this level, we're starting to get into having an invention to work with. So if you have an idea but you don't have no clue as to how it would work. You're probably still at the idea stage and you need to get a little more technical details into how it will actually work to transition from the idea stage to the invention stage. So thanks again for checking out Inventor's Quick Tips and we'll see you next time.